Everyone knows the story of Icarus. It's about a boy and his dad trying to escape from prison by flying with handcrafted wings. Icarus's dad tells him, Hey, whatever you do, don't fly into the sun. I know it's really cool looking, but don't fly into it. But Icarus says, Whatever, dad. He flies into the sun anyway and freaking dies. Stupid. At least I'm pretty sure that's how it goes. I mean, honestly, they should have just flown at night when the sun is turned off. Well, anyway, Kid Icarus is a game about an angle. He's so acute, at least in game. Don't look at the box art version. What the hell did they do to him? His name isn't even Icarus, it's Pit. And unlike Icarus, I don't think he has a dad. He just has a mommy, sorry, mommy, sorry, mommy, sorry. And he has to save her from the evil clutches of, whoa, also mommy, sorry, also mo uh, sorry. First of all, this is a jump and shoot game. You can jump and shoot and duck and duck while jumping. There's even some promo art showing him duck jumping. <laughs> It starts out pretty easy, but the difficulty curve is insane because after two minutes of shooting snakes and eyeballs, you run into DEATH, who loses his shit when he sees you. This was the enemy I could never get past as a kid. He honestly kind of scared me. The way he suddenly speeds up and starts flipping out when you aggro him is really uncanny compared to all the predictable enemies we've fought so far. But I'm grown now. I'm braver. I'm better. I'm finished. As you climb through the map, there's little rooms to check out. Some with fat loot, a swarm of noses, that's weird. Or nothing. That's somehow more weird. There's also a shop. But even after killing all those enemies, we're broke. Sorry, bitch. I can't give credit. But just when you thought this game couldn't get any quirkier, you can press A and B on the second player controller to haggle. It's yours, my friend. Apparently on the Japan-only Famicom disc system, you can also haggle by talking into the controller's built-in microphone. But it doesn't always work. Come back when you're a little... Richard. World 1 is pretty straightforward once you get the hang of it. There's lots of these little one-tile jumps you have to get past and some inklings that chase you across multiple screens, but old men in my area keep giving me fat loot! This is the kind of game that starts out really hard, but gets easier as you go because of the different upgrades and power increases you get. Like passing this harsh training rewards you with a wand, a bow, or an F. I don't know what any of these do. If only there was something that could tell me what all of these different things in the game mean. Whoa, what's this? The game's manual in mint condition? In PDF form? On the Nintendo website? I just wanted to mention how well-made early Nintendo game manuals are. This thing's got it all. A map of the game, all the enemies, what all the items do, everything. It's like a strategy guide before Nintendo realized they could sell strategy guides. And then it's on to the first dungeon. Now these sections are very confusing. And in order to make sure we don't get lost, we need a map. But this isn't a map, it's a waffle. In order to turn the waffle into a map, you need to buy a pencil from the shop to mark where on the waffle you've been, and a toy to show where you currently are. And then after spending 300 hearts on those items, you have to realize this map doesn't have any defining features, no doors, no symbols, no nothing. And so the next step is to Google an actual map. The first dungeon isn't so bad if you know where you're going. All the enemies are pretty harm. Oh wait, what the f is that? I'm, I'm a f***ing eggplant? What the f*** do you mean I'm an eggplant? Use the hospital to find a cure. Wow, thank goodness the medical system has a cure for this. And thank goodness they take my insurance. <laughs> and yeah, the eggplant curse is a fate worse than death because you have to run back to the hospital every time you get it or you're not allowed to progress. But through all of our wandering and farming hearts and getting unbelievably lost, I'm terrible at reading maps. There is one safe haven, the hot spring chamber. Why is it yellow? And we can't forget to use the hammers we've collected along the way to free some Centurion Chads, who will help us with the first boss, Twin Bellows. He's a doggy. Kind of like Cerberus, but they ran out of budget for the third head. We shoot a bunch of arrows at him, and he's dead. And it's on the world to- Oh, that crystal wand I got earlier is finally functioning. It protects us from everything, even these falling rock men. Wait, rock man? But yeah, like I said before, this game gets way easier after the first dungeon when your upgrades come online. We get a sacred bow that lets us shoot across the screen, and an F to pay respects. With all this sweet gear, we're freaking invincible! Haha! <laughs> Wait, what are you doing? Stop! Oh, stop, oh. Did we just get mugged? Is this guy selling our stolen goods? Mm. We're so poor, it's better to just die and start over. 
<laughs> that sounds like the title of an anime. These little treasure rooms are so fun. You can break as many pots as you want unless you run into the god of poverty. But if you break every pot without running into him, you get some free stuff like potions and feathers and wait, what is that? A credit card? I give credit. Yeah, I guess he gives credit, which you actually have to pay back later. Unless I never come back to your shop again, idiot. Ha 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 ha. And the bank will never find me because I'm lost in another fucking dungeon. We probably could have beaten the first dungeon without a map, but this one is absolutely ridiculous. But just in case you feel like looking up a map is cheating, I went ahead and drew one myself on this bit of scratch paper I had lying around. As you can see, the best route through the dungeon is balls, balls, Mushroom, eggplant, spike, spike, balls, eggplant, pea break, and then spike, shop, snake, eggplant, mushroom, spike, spike, mushroom, balls, empty, spike, mushroom, shop, eggplant, mushroom, big snake. Man, the enemies in this dungeon are kind of phallic, huh? Wait a minute, this map is kind of phallic too! Q draw is a long fight. And that isn't a setup for another dirty joke or anything. He jumps in and out of lava, he has a tiny hitbox, and takes like 70 hits to kill. The Giga Chad Centurions get eaten right away, so they aren't much help, making this fight long and ha difficult. But we beat him! On to Sky World! This is the final climbing stage, so the enemies are a lot harder. Like Keepa, aw man, Komedo, which is literally just a Metroid, and Call It. Hey, I'm Call It. And there's some seriously nutty single block platforming. Like a lot of it. It's freaking sexy single blocks in your area around here. But we push through and make it to the final fortress. And I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, I was lost in this hellscape for 30 minutes with a map. There's no shot they expect you to get through this dungeon with nothing but a waffle, a pencil, and a torch to guide you. These dungeons are absolutely ridiculous, but eventually we make it to the boss. The dirty bubble. We pop them and it's on to the final stage. It's a fun little shoot 'em up using the sacred treasures we've collected from the bosses against starfish and zombies and harpy whoa those are booba in an nes game manual <laughs> the 80s were crazy and eventually we make it to the final boss medusa she keeps shooting out projectiles and this goofy snake man bastard but we can block everything with our gamer shield we shoot her like 50 times in this repetitive pattern and it's over <gasps> mommy sorry mommy sorry this game actually has multiple endings depending on how well you did everything from Pit turning into a nose if you're terrible, and getting a little spooch from Palutena if you wanted to present the game like a Giga Chad. Let's see what we get. Hey, bald! Aw, oh, come on, man. What did I do to deserve this? You want it? Sorry, little mm, bitch. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please do the YouTube thing like the video, subscribe, and ring the notification bell. I also want to give a huge thanks to my Mega Chats for their extra support of the channel. You can become a Mega Chad today by clicking the join button. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time, everybody.